Imagine with me just for the moment that you're just coming home from work late in the evening and as you pull into the driveway and walk in the door of your home, you realize there's the family gathered on the couch. They're all watching TV and they've got fresh popcorn and they're waiting for you to join them. Just as you get ready to sit down, you realize, I, I think I left my phone in the car and you go back out the door to get your cell phone out of the car. Just as you open the door to your car, Boom! Flames shoot out of the window of every corner of the house. Welcome to Leading Leaders Podcast. Five minute videos, five days a week. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. As you're standing in the driveway watching the flames coming out of every corner, your first thought probably is, I'll dial 911, I already have my phone in my hand. And then your next thought is probably, they can't get here fast enough. No matter where they are, I'm watching the flames burning up my family. I have to take action, right? And so you drop the phone and you begin to charge your way into the home and halfway up the driveway or halfway up the sidewalk, you realize there's an obstacle. There's something standing in your way. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a chihuahua and it's barking at you and it's standing on the sidewalk and it doesn't want you to pass. How long do you let that chihuahua stand between you and your family inside this burning home? Okay, forget about the Chihuahua. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a Rottweiler or a pit bull. I mean, okay, let's go bigger. Maybe it's a full-size grizzly bear standing there, arms extended, nine feet high, paws, claws, big enough to just one swipe take your head off. But do you stop then? What stops you from charging back into that home on fire? If it's me and I'm thinking of my family inside, me and that grizzly bear are about about fitting to throw down, and it ain't going to be pretty. Because I'm going through him, I'm going around him, I'm, somehow I'm getting to my family. See, I think when we begin to put in perspective the things that we want out of life, whether it's to rescue our family or rebuild a relationship or find the right career or make the right financial investments or, or find the right JV, the right joint venture partner, we have these little fears and obstacles that come up. And if we were to seriously consider the size of the obstacle or the size of the fear with the potential outcome, if we overcome that fear, we would realize that most of those fears are like barking gerbils, maybe the size of a chihuahua, but very few of the things that we fear are as big and, and fearsome as a grizzly bear on our sidewalk in front of our home. In fact, most of our fears are purely imagined. Most of them we, we make up on our own. Our fear of rejection, our fear that other people won't understand us or won't like us if they do understand us. Most of us think more about what other people think about us than actually other people think about us. And that becomes a fear. It becomes a crippling fear. It becomes the kind of fear that stands between you and success, between you and the next sale, between you and the next business opportunity, or the next writing of the book, or the next opportunity on stage. And when that fear stands in the way, what you're really saying is that I care more about what other people think about me in that way of rejection or declining my offer than I care about the outcome that I'm seeking on the other side of it. Many people have said fear lies on, or excuse me, success lies on the other side of fear. Many things lie on the other side of fear. Fear sometimes is a test of our resolve, a test of our commitment. I'm not afraid of a chihuahua in, in the comparison, of afraid of a Rottweiler versus afraid of my fear of, of my family burning in a fire. No, I, I don't fear the fire as much as I want my family out of there. I don't fear that Rottweiler compared to the fire at all. A grizzly bear now nah, might be getting a little more on a match. I, I know he can do some serious harm to me, and, and this is going to be a war, and it's going to be a battle, but the outcome is so high. The price to be paid for allowing the fear to win is more than I'm willing to accept. So what about you? As you lead yourself and those around you into this next year, as we come into 2020, what is it that you're afraid of? Is it a realistic fear? Is it one that you need to reevaluate and ask yourself, where did it get the right to make me afraid anyway? Or is it something that you need to look at and go, you know what, it's a real fear. I don't like it, I don't like, like the way it makes my body feel. 
but I know that the outcome if I overcome this fear is so much better than where I am today. Maybe you need to get professional help, maybe a, a hypnotherapist or maybe just a therapist, somebody to talk through your fears and help you understand what their origins were and how to overcome them. Maybe you just need to charge ahead and go after the things that you really want to see succeed anyway. And just let the fear lie on the sidewalk as you step forward. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day. Subscribe now for our extensive video library of leadership lessons promoting faith, family, and freedom.